Hello and welcome. This is Stocks to Watch on Bloomberg Quint. This is where we take you through a handful of stocks which are in the news, perhaps on earnings, and we take them up with our experts. Uh, well, today we are going to talk about three very large companies, all from the We have ITC, ICIC Bank, and Z Entertainment, all on the back of earnings. And to take us through uh, some of these stocks. Well, we are in conversation with Avinash Gorakshakar. He's the director of research at Profit Mass Securities. And before I go across to Avinash, let's talk about the first stock, and that's ITC. Well, uh, on expected lines, its net sales have declined 17% for the quarter gone by. That's the first quarter. Uh, we all know that, uh, well, there were about 40 odd days of lockdown in the first quarter as well, which is why cigarette sales did take a huge hit. That's the reason why we're looking at a decline in its operating margins, which fell to around 28% from well over 39.7%. And the net profit consequently declined 26% year on year. Uh, and as, as I was suggesting, the cigarettes business not only contributes a significant chunk to the overall revenue spike, but also forms uh, the majority of the EBIT uh, or uh, you know, the operating gains. Let's get in Avinash into the conversation. Avinash, good morning and thanks for joining in. What do you make of ITC's earnings? And uh, based on the recent movement of the stock, are markets already pricing in a gradual recovery going ahead for ITC? Uh, morning, Adam. I think clearly uh, numbers which have come out from ITC are much better than what the street anticipated. In fact, uh, you know, the overall volume degrowth in cigarettes uh, was anticipated at almost 40 to 45 percent. But the degrowth has been restricted to 35 uh, to 37 percent. And I think that is definitely something to cheer about. More importantly, uh, I think the FMCG business this time has done remarkably well. I think uh, FMCG has helped them significantly uh, to reduce, uh, you know, the negativity which came from the cigarette business. And our sense is that hopefully the second quarter and the third quarter could see a gradual kind of resumption of normalcy in ITC's operations. And overall, I would believe that, you know, this is a performance which was uh, more or less anticipated, but much better than what most analysts and much better than our expectations. So I think overall, uh, you know, this could be a stock which could possibly not correct significantly today. And in the near term, you know, any Correction should be used as an opportunity to accumulate the stock. We are positive on ITC, and our sense is that you could see a price target of almost 250, 260 year. So I think clearly it's a buy, uh, you know, uh, candidate, and uh, definitely an accumulate if the price corrects marginally today. Okay, well that's ITC for you, and we we'll move on to the next one. It's a very big, large, uh, uh, you know, private bank, it's ICICI Bank, where we have seen <coughs> net interest in grow 20% year on year, net profit also up 26%, and we haven't seen a, a substantial rise in provisioning, uh, and that's the reason why we are looking at the strength in the bottom line. Uh, Avinash, uh, what do you make of ICICI Bank's numbers and the way ahead? Uh, I think Agam numbers have been much better than street expectations, and I think the single biggest number which the street was looking forward was the moratorium number. I think moratorium number have come down from 30 odd percent to 17 percent, and the management is quite hopeful that this could improve further. Although they have given a cautious stand that this could increase by a couple of percentage points in the coming quarter, but overall, I would believe that you know the asset quality number has been very uh, positive. In fact, uh, you know uh, almost after 18 quarters, this has been the best quarter for them in terms of asset quality and uh, definitely in terms of the overall loan book growth in terms of the disbursement growth the bank is obviously expecting that the second half of fy21 should be a lot better our sense is you know the market could possibly give it a big thumbs up considering that you know this has been one of those uh, private sector banks where market was expecting a good rise in profits but a 36 percent rise in profit is definitely an excellent number and i think this uh, momentum should continue in the next uh, two to three quarters so i think uh, one should definitely look at it from a long-term perspective this is a good bank uh, which possibly could get further irritated and could even see levels of 600 rupees over the next 12 to 15 months. Okay. okay. On we talk about the entertainment. Now, uh, this is where the quarter has not been encouraging at all. It's a very weak one where its uh, net sales have uh, a down around 3.4%. Perhaps more importantly, the company has posted a loss again expectation of a profit and that loss is also quite deep uh, of worth around to the tune of 767 uh, on crores. In fact, the company has gone ahead and posted an operational loss. Its EBITDA loss stands at around 562 crores. 
against the gain year on year. So uh, not the best of water for the entertainment. Uh, Avinash, uh, your view on this one, would you stay cautious and perhaps avoid buying into the entertainment? Uh, Agam, I think these numbers were definitely uh, significantly uh, negative and uh, much uh, below what the street anticipated. I think one should clearly see that you know the advertising revenue, which is a very big chunk for the company, has been down by almost 15%. So you know that is something which is a worrisome sign. And most importantly, company has provided for all its uh, mutual fund uh, you know losses uh, for the Dish TV investment. So I think you know in one way the management has done a good thing that it has written off all its past uh, you know. Uh, Kind of negative uh, kind of uh, you know developments which are already there on the balance sheet. Our sense is that at least for the next one or two quarters, Agam, this stock may not move anywhere, considering the fact that even as of now, advertising flows are not going to be great. And uh, despite the fact that the management has provided all these one-time investments, the stock may not get re-rated immediately. But yes, if the stock corrects significantly, then I think one could definitely look at it from a longer-term perspective. Here, uh, there are also some uh, market reports that possibly a management change could also happen. And I would not be surprised that if there is any new strategic investor or a new investor who comes in, possibly could you know give a little more sentimental rally to the stock. But fundamentally, these numbers are definitely negative and quite disappointing. I would stay away from the stock and would wait for a better price to enter. So I think uh, you know from a longer term perspective, the business looks attractive, but from a near term, I think it is avoidable. Uh, so that's the you and finally Avinash. Uh, uh, an, an idea for the day, something new that you spotted? Uh, in fact, Agam, uh, we, uh, within the cash segment, we like a company which is into real estate renting and the company's name is Nesco. Now, what is interesting about this company is that, uh, you know, recently uh, Mumbai uh, DMC commissioner has stated that coronavirus cases have actually reduced significantly. And uh, this company has given its Bombay exhibition facilities to the coronavirus patient. So obviously our sense is that uh, maybe for the current quarter and for the second quarter numbers may be softer, but the second half of FI21 should definitely see a strong bounce back. More importantly, they have, you know, the Nesco Towers, which is actually a kind of an annuity business model. And most importantly, uh, they are a zero debt company. They have cash of almost 600, 700 crores on the books. So I would believe that, you know, investors who want to take a long term bet on this company should buy now. It's arrived at a very attractive price. And longer term, I think you could see a very significant amount of risk reward coming in here once normalcy happens. So this is a good uh, value pick at the current odd levels of around 450. So I think investors should keep a close watch here. Watching out for oh, Nesco. by there. But Avinash Gorak Shakar, thank you so much for joining us and taking us through your views on the stocks that we discussed today. Well, on that note, it's a wrap on the segment, but there's lots more lined up. Stay tuned to Google.